I want to let people know, uh, 23 hours from now, we are going to have Steve Kerr on these radio waves. Wait, who? Steve Kerr. Who's that? Coach of your Golden State Warriors. He's joining the morning roast? 9 o'clock. Tomorrow? 9 o'clock. Not p.m., a.m. I'm not coaching, but he's coaching. Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr. 9 ah. o'clock tomorrow morning. He's making radio. his debut on the morning roast. I've been waiting to talk to Steve Kerr on this platform. Uh, you coach him. Talk to him in a couple media days. Ooh, that's going to be a lot of fun. We could ask him about six starters. What his offensive philosophy is for Team USA. Yeah, ask him about Draymond Green coming in as or stating that this is the most important season of his career. also think, and I tweeted this out yesterday, and I know nobody cares about my tweets, but overall... We, we're so hyper-focused on the starters because, oh, my God, they had the best net rating in the first quarter. How many games they were behind in the first quarter? And I know some of that had to do with the second unit. But the whole, hey, they had the best net rating going to play. They switched the starting lineup in the playoffs. So how much they believed in the net rating with that starting unit. They had to switch things up against the, against the Kings and the Lakers. People forget, Michael Green started a game or two against the L.A. Lakers. You told me that they broke a record. For most starting combinations last yeah, year? I believe they had 26 different starting combinations. I could be wrong. Which was a Warrior record? A Warrior a franchise record. That's kind of insane. Yeah, here it is right here. Uh, number of different lineups per season for the Warriors. Last year, 20, it wasn't a franchise record. Oh. Because um, if you added 2009 to 10, they had 49 different lineups. <laughs> Uh, wow. Last year, they had 25 different lineups. That's still a lot. Still a lot. Still a lot. 2017, 18, they had 27 different lineups. That was due to the injuries with Curry and company. But different starting lineups since Steph was a warrior. Uh, 25 last year, which wasn't even the most his first year as a rookie. 49. So 25 different lineups last year. So, you know, I know people may think starting is so. I want to ask Steve Kerr. Are we, is starting a basketball game? Overblown because he was a bench player, a role player. Meaning, or is it more so about the finishing five? Do yeah. we put too much stock in the first five minutes of a basketball game? Because I always hear from Bully and other players, you know, if you get out to a huge lead, it's almost detrimental to the team because you get out so far, you get comfortable, you're up 20, now the team's battling, battling, battling. You know, basketball is a game of runs. Yeah, momentum. So I, I wonder because I believe it's being overblown. I think one of the storylines that nobody's even talking about. Is where is Andrew Wiggins at? Health wise, mentally, we know he took the two month absence last season. I thought he's played his best basketball of his career. Coming off that finals run, the way he started his season, then he suffers the adductor strain. Well, something I keep thinking about is for the Warriors to have their best year, do they need a career year from one of the big three, or do they need a career year from one of the others? Andrew Wiggins, Kavon Looney. Maybe Kaminga. Jonathan Kaminga. You know, like, I don't know who. Moses I, Moody. Like, to me, I, I feel like I'm I'm going in the, uh, could be like a Chris Paul, you know, bounce back year. You know what I mean? That right. wouldn't be a career year, but like a rejuvenation year, I guess, for right. him. But you get where I'm going? Right. Like, you know, but, but here's my thing. And, and, and I, I think the big three could all have stellar right. years. You need Wiggins. You need Wiggins. To bounce back. You need one of these other guys to step up. You don't need Wiggins. You need two-way Wiggs. Yeah, well, that, yes. You know, you know, I get what you're saying. You but get like, where I'm going. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. But the emphasis on Wiggins is you need him both defensively and offensively. He's one of your more athletic players. He's your best individual defender right now on this basketball team. And he got off to a hot start last season. A hot start. And everything went awry with their adductor straight. And then he got sick. Then he went away for a couple months. And he was never able to get back to form. Where is Andrew Wiggins at? Because to me, he's the ultimate X factor in this basketball team. If he's played at that all-star level he did during that championship run, then look out with the Warriors. Was then he, maybe they're not dead. That was his career year. Yep. The year they won it all. Would you agree? Yep. When you look up the, the body of work, all-star mm -hmm. game, mm -hmm. postseason, that was his career year, right? Mm-hmm. I'm a believer that to win it all, you have to have career years from somebody, right? It, it, it just any sport. Pick the sport. You know, Aubrey Huff had a career year with the Giants. Right. They win it all. You know what I mean? Uh, other people did as well. But, like, you need that random guy to step up. Ricky Waters, last 100 Niners won a championship. Right? <laughs> had a career year. I he mean, got paid. I, I look at, like, what Mahomes did last year, and it was even more spectacular than his MVP right. season in right. terms of carrying that team at times.
other guys stepped up and contributed, but that's what you need. When I look at the Denver Nuggets, you could say Jokic had a career year because he, you know, obviously had backed it up. So did Aaron Gordon. Absolutely, and and I thought that Murray came back with a with a force. Michael Porter Jr. You know that Bruce was his Brown, right? Yeah. So you could you it's pick and choose your poison there. I'm thinking about the Warriors this year in like a template. Obviously, need to have Wiggins back at 100 percent healthy. Who of these other guys is going to have to this point in their in their career a career year? Is it a Moody? Is it a Looney? Is we're, we're just taking a the Kaminga? leap. Just taking the leap because I don't. You know, but a career year up right, to this point. Up to this we don't point, know what yeah. their full body. Katie take career. that. Yeah, Katie take like right that. Right now, leap. they've been very unreliable. Right. Some of these guys off the bench. No doubt. Right. So you know, am I sleeping on Corey Joseph's no. impact? I didn't know Divincenzo would be as impactful last year as he ended up being. Did you? No. But I thought it was a good fit. It was because a great of the opportunity fit. because when you play off of Stephen Curry, you play off of Clay Thompson. The yes. spacing that's provided to you because of the attention they garner on the basketball court. It allows that's why I always loved the Wiggins move from day one. I was like, you know what? He's gonna be the fourth option on this team. He doesn't have the pressure of carrying a franchise, you know, carrying Minnesota. He can kind of just lay in the cut, chill. Curry will take the microphone. Draymond Green is outspoken. He'll take the microphone. He'll take some of the spotlight. Klay Thompson, when he comes back, will take some of the spotlight. He's going to be able to play the easiest basketball of his career. That's why I love the Wiggins move, and that's why I think he's the X Factor this year because I think those same principles apply to his game. People are going to be hyper-focused on Klay Thompson because he led the league in three-point makes. Oh, CP3. CP3. Steph Curry. See, Draymond CP3 Green. CP3 is even more important than Klay. I kind of know what I'm going to get from Klay. Like, I, I know what I'm going to get from him. I'm not sure what version of CP3 I'm going to get and what it looks like with this team. Well, not that he can't be good. I'm just saying I don't look, know what it looks like. I know a lot of people, you know, they tease me about watching the NBA League Pass. And we all have a lot of disdain for Chris Paul. We're going to love Chris Paul now, right? Uh, we got to buy in on him being a warrior. But he did shoot 37.5% for three. He did average over 14 and nine, uh, 14 points and nine assists, playing a secondary role to Devin Booker. Well, and then once Kevin Durant came, he played third fiddle and was still solid and got those open jumpers that he hit. He just couldn't stay healthy. That's the biggest thing with Chris Paul to be because he has a. We want to talk about Brock Purdy's brain. Let's be real, Chris Paul. Oh, he's a, has a great IQ. Top ten guard brain of all time. There's no doubt about it. B, I would also say that uh, his control of the pace is desperately needed. Mm -hmm. When I watched the Warriors last year, we could say starting unit, second unit, whatever. Whoever was out there, erratic pacing was a problem for them. Mm -hmm. Horrible shot selection, rushing possessions and creating unforced turnovers, not playing within the flow of the game or yeah. understanding the score or the momentum of the game, that's not going to be as big of an issue with CP3. Yeah, and we also didn't even, somebody just brought up uh, Comcast Business Text Line, 925. We need Wiggs and GP2. Forgot Katie about Pitt him. In a second to have good God, years. Forgot for about him. Line. So... Uh, I kind of forgot about him. There you go. So you got some guys here who could defend at a he high level individually. And if he's healthy with this team playing his role, we talk about role players, I think the Warriors could have a very successful season. I truly blew. And then a lot of people say, you're a homer. You're just paid to say that. Whatever. I know what I believe in. I'm optimistic when it comes to these teams. When they've won championships before, you get the benefit of doubt for me. Or if you're competing like the 49ers, you get the BOD, as Guru would say, benefit of doubt. Uh, benefit of doubt uh, when it comes to playing at a high, high level. So I'm excited about the Golden State Warriors, man. I really am. I can't wait for the season to start. Uh, back to football for a second. 510 Comcast Business Text Line. But it's great news. Steve Curry, 9 o'clock, 9 a.m. tomorrow mm -hmm. on the morning roast. You don't want to miss it. 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Steve Curry, the head coach of the Golden State Warriors. Four time chat with the Warriors. How many rings as a player? Five? <laughs> Pretty impressive. What was it four? You win one or two with the Spurs. Did you get two with the Spurs? I think it was two. So that's nine rings for Steve Kerr. Two, I think. Yeah. Uh, question for you on Steve Kerr. I was talking with Lubman this morning, and we were running around some ideas. And if you had to bet right now, do you bet that Coach Kerr only coaches the Warriors or that he goes somewhere else at some point down the line? I think he only coaches the Warriors. I think so, too. Yeah, he's a lifer. Well, and I also think about, like, think about the situation. Once you've been here, Think about the situation that would entice you to take on a challenge. It would have to be it would have to be somewhere where he thinks he can win almost, you know, easily mm -hmm. right away, right? Mm -hmm. I'm with you. Uh 
Like, I don't see him taking over the Orlando Magic. No, 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 no. He's he's in the Bay Area. He's close to the home he grew up in in Southern California. His son is now coaching the G League team, the Santa Cruz Warriors. Why would he leave? Well, I, he's got all every resource available to him from the owner, Joe Lacob, from the GM and Mike Dunleavy Jr. He's now coaching Team USA. And he has Stephen Curry. Yeah. Why would you want to leave that? Stephen Curry right now is getting his Jerry Rice on to Dubai. He's running the sand dunes out there in Dubai and Bill playing Walsh's golf. Walsh's biggest regret was leaving a little early. Yep. He was crying. I know. He cried about it. He watched him in that Super Bowl. He said, this game's over. It's going to be a blowout when they beat the Broncos 55-10. to 10. And he regretted it. While the players are like, yo, we're going to prove to Bill Walsh that we can take this thing to the next level. <laughs> they did. <You> know? <laughs> they are kind of tired of Bill. Um, so, no, nah, I think Steve Kerr is going to be around for a long, long time. Um, now, we'll see what happens with the starter season. Things can change, right? They get out to a slow start. They struggle. Who knows what the noise is? Maybe Joe Lacob becomes impatient and he's like, you know what? You've lost your voice with this team. We've got to move a different direction. We're bringing in David Black. Yeah, but I, I, don't, I don't see that happening whatsoever. I was teasing, by the way, on that. No, not David Platt. I know, I know, I know, David I know. Blatt. I, I just ignored the David Platt thing. That's you being silly, Shasky. It's you being silly. I mean, he did go to the finals. He did. And then LeBron ran him out. 